So it's predominantly yellow, but look at that color. Oh my gosh. So you can roll it up, make a little ball out of it. Now our guest today is Brenda Boylan. Brenda. Hi, ready? Eric. Okay, you looks like you're all ready. I am. I have all my equipment here. And um, are we ready then? We're ready. We're rolling. Awesome. So um, a lot of times when you're painting with pastels, uh, your pastels will fall to the ground sometimes. And also we collect a lot of the dust that falls from the painting into a trough. And I have a, a way to recycle those bits and pieces. And I want to give you some really good tips on uh, how to do it effectively, cleanly, and quickly. Um, so first and foremost, the main thing you're going to need are some uh, latex or rubber gloves. Uh, you don't want to use dishwasher gloves because they'll leave um, imprints on the pastel. And um, I like the, uh, the vinyl type. I use a, a white one. And you're going to need uh, distilled water, distilled water and a dropper. And you're going to need hand wipes um, for cleanup. And if you don't have a pestle and mortar, you can always get one of these like through um, an online uh, Amazon or whatever, a pestle and mortar or um, what I've always learned to do is to use uh, Ziploc bags, which are cheap and effective. So today we're going to use the Ziploc bags because this is um, pretty cheap easy. Cheap and effective. <laughs> it's very effective. And I mean, you, you know, when you throw them out, it's wasteful. I'm always thinking more about plastics with our earth. Um, I also have a, a rubber mallet to help crush the pastels in the Ziploc bag. Now, you probably had that anyway because you used that on Joe. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> and um, I have a baby rag, um, a baby diaper that I use in the studio quite a bit. It's very soft cotton, uh, and I use this to help mount, uh, pound with the rubber uh, mallet. And then I also have... Um, two palette knives. So if I want to make like a square shaped palette um, pastel, I can help mold it that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, I have separated my um, pastels into um, their main hues. And um, I have larger chunks in my bowl here, but normally I'll have like pastel dust that fell to the to my bin and it usually ends up making a gray color. But here I have um, some chips that have broken off and um, you can reuse them. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, they're, they're pigment and they already have the binder in them. And all you have to do is crush them. So I'm going to take um, a Ziploc bag and I'm open it up. And I think what I would like to do is make maybe a beautiful purple. So with purple, uh, if you're into color theory like I am, um, it's, it's between red and blue, and I have my red and blue, and that will make a violet, violet purple. So I'm going to add these beautiful, beautiful intense blues. Look at that. Oh, oh it's my favorite so, color. Oh, I know. It's, I, love, I love these blues. So anyway, um, I'm going to add a couple of them. Here's one, here's one that's like a blue-violet and this lighter blue so that'll give that'll make the paint the pastel a little lighter in value if i add a little lighter blue and then i'm going to i think i'm going to use these two uh cooler reds because they're closer to violet than the like a cooler red would be here on this than um, a red 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 is pretty warm but I'm going to make it more of a violet, blue violet. So I'm going to go for the red, the cooler blue. So you're using a lot of color theory with um, mixing pastels. And it really, if you understand color theory and get to know color theory, 
then your work improves greatly. I can't tell you how much I love color theory. And um, it's just learning how colors work together. So I'm going to take this uh, Ziploc bag. I'm going to zip it up. And then I'm going to wrap it in this diaper like that. And oh, also, you're going to need tarps and yeah, just an area that you can wipe up clean. So you have to be careful about having um, cats or animals or pets or children or whatever um, around. So and I would recommend that you do this outside in your garage. Um, and so here I'm going to move a few things out of the way and I'm going to pound on this. <laughs> I got a ways to go on this one, but you can see how it's starting to crush. Yep. Yeah. And, ooh, this is going to be a real beautiful color. See, this isn't something we normally do on TV. you going to move your bowls out of there. Yeah, that's probably. They're going to go flying. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm on a card table. I'm in my office at my at home. And um, that's kind of problematic because I don't got Wi-Fi in my studio, remember? Yep. <laughs> Great way to get your frustrations out. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. And then uh, it's uh, it, anyway, they're starting to get crushed up. Um, and I'm going to do this as well. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's nice and smooth. So you don't want to have any pieces. Um, you want all powder, is that you right? You want it all a fine powder because what will happen is if you have two colors together um, that are uniquely different, say like a blue and a yellow that you're crushing together, the yellow and the blue will make stripes on your um, mark making. And um, it will it will be inconsistent, and you want it to be consistent, very consistent. So um, I can fill it in here, and I can still fill some chunks. You know, maybe I use this mortar just to kind of make things a little faster. And I'm going to stick my Ziploc bag in here and crush it this way. Oh, get your aggressions out. You see that? Well, you have no aggression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a little so bit I of would, an evil laugh there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, I was uh, listening to the interview that you um, did of me the other day. Um, the interview that we had at the studio there. And um, I have to compliment you, Eric. You have such a... a so much experience with interviewing and asking the right questions and um ooh, that feels really good so i'm kind of need a little bit more this is the this is the part that's just kind of um tricky because you have to make sure it's nice and dust you know nice fine fine dust and i'm doing this very cleanly because i have a ziploc bag but when I do um, roll pastels, I'll, I'll take it out in the garage and it'll be like very, very messy. So there's still some chips in here. Do you typically wear a mask? Yes. Thank you for asking about that. Um, I, I typically don't, but I would recommend that we do because, um, you know, I've, I've learned from the master Kitty Wallace and she says that it, it's not possible to get ill from the pigment, but I'm still cautious. So um, today I won't be because I want you to be able to hear my voice and not be muffled. And I think we're all a little tired of, of um, wearing masks. Oh, that feels really good. Okay. Yeah. That's a couple more pieces in there. And um, anyway, yeah, I picked up this mortar um, on Amazon, and this is my first time using it, so it's kind of fun. Yeah. And yeah, 
I could probably do some cooking with it too, you think? No, maybe not after a pigment's been in it. <laughs> I was trying to catch you on that one, Eric. All right, so um, I think it's, for now, for, for time-wise, I'm going to say that it's all completely crushed. And I'm going to add a few drops of distilled water. How do you know and it how it has many? to be distilled water? You don't want to use drinking water, and um, you don't want to use um, you know purified water. You want to use distilled water. How do you because, know how many drops to add? Well, you're going to add a few at a time, and you're going to make um, start to squish them together. Ooh, fun. And you're going to want to make it into a clay, a clay like texture and um, you don't want to add too much water because if you do then it's just going to be a mess so you so we use a dropper to do it just a little bit at a time yeah oh I can feel it. so when it gets wet it starts to feel cold and that's just uh, nature and what it does can you see inside of there Yep. Mmm, yummy. Yeah, I know. Mm, Look at that violet. That's going to be gorgeous. Yeah, you're making me hungry. <laughs> and, you know, the cool thing about this um, ha uh, hand rolling your leftover um, pigments is you can add from a really beautiful, vibrant, pigmented pastel, you can add a, a chip or two from... Um, one that's in its color family just to really give it a little a lot of vibrancy but also um, you can choose to make um, what I call mystery colors it's when they're just a bunch of colors like the pastel dust um, from your tray get a lot of grays I'll bet oh gorgeous grays yeah and oh my gosh they're I have so many pastels from um, that have been given to me and then sometimes I'll just take the pastels and and um, roll what I have so many I have so many I can make my own um, and it's still needing a little more water and um, obviously I I didn't grind it up as well as it should have been but for um, lack of time I'm gonna put a little bit more water in there well, maybe putting it in the mortar and pedestal pestle is a pedestal pestle anyway? Pest pestle. Pestle. Maybe you put it in there and and squish it around now and see what happens. Maybe it'll help the water absorb it more. Oh mm, yeah, maybe. Let's try it. Plus, you've just bought it. You have to use it. Oh my goodness! I know. So, yeah. Why not? Why not? I thought I was thinking that would be more effective, but here we are. So I'm going to stick this in here and I'm going to try to be neat about it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, look at that color. Oh my Ooh. gosh. Can you see that? Not yet. Oh, how pretty. Oh my gosh. Oh. 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 <laughs> Hold that up to the camera so we can see it. Oh. Yeah. Now I can make this a little lighter in value and less intense if I added more. Um, uh, if I added like a light white pastel to it or um, uh, yeah, like a white pastel, I'm going to get this mortar thing. I'm not doing this right. This new mortar thing is kind of cool. Um, anyway, you can make up any color you want. And a lot of times I just call them mystery colors, like I said. And I'm going to set this aside and then start to crush in this up a little bit. And boy, this really is going to need a lot of water. I, for some reason, it's not um, turning into clay as well. Oh, yeah, there we go. Can you see that, you guys? A little bit. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's looking like a clay now. And I'm going to use this. Oh, 
If you guys are enjoying this, make sure to leave a comment or a like or a heart and uh, also share it so other people can see it. This is, I think, a first time on this show. Yeah, I would think it is the first time. This isn't something that you typically would see. Um, and I thought it would be something completely unique for you guys. And uh, so if you have, um, if your pastel pigment, See, it looks like I added a little too much water to it to mix it because it's very gooey. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it on a paper towel. And this happens when we're rolling is, is you have to try to get the consistency where it's like clay. If you guys know what clay is, hopefully. <laughs> There's a paper here. And... Can you see this, you guys? Yep. Okay, good. It's messy. I'm going to blot it with my paper towels. Ooh, yum. I'll blot it again because it's still a little wet. Ah, oh, look at that. It's super messy, super fun. Look at that. Oh, I get to roll it. I'm going to blot it a little bit more it's still too wet Blah. very wet. <laughs> love the sound effects <laughs> i know it's really funny how it wants to stick um to my hands which is not that funny but as i roll it it'll all start to collect like you know how mercury does in a uh aluminum um Mercury does from a thermometer, if you've ever spilled one of those, which is toxic. Um, anyway, so you roll. At, at this point, it would be good for me to get another pair of gloves because they're super sticky. And um, But that's okay. I'm not going to do that. Um, and you can um, roll them. And I pulled out a couple of pieces of paper here. And that I have, it's like a hard writing paper. And kind of like, I'm going to do it like that. Come on, let go. Now I'm going to take my gloves off because they're awfully messy. I'm going to start getting messy. So it's always good to have a lot of gloves with you when you're um, doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, so you'd like to use 12 pair of gloves for one single pastel stick. <laughs> no, not that many. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm going to make this one a little bit square. I've never done this before, so this is kind of fun. I learned this the other day um, where you could take your palette knife. And I like the square, uh, holding a square pastel in my hand. Uh, and the round ones are fun, too. Um, but I can get a really, really good edge with a square that has um, a sharp edge on it. And I'm gonna... wow. Yeah, this is so fun. Yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. So we get excited about the least little things, don't we? I know. <laughs> so how long does that have to dry? So that's a good question, Eric. Um Thank you. till it's no longer cool to the touch. And there you have it. Wow. Look, look at that. So in theory one could just buy dry pigments and make their own pastel sticks that way, yes? Um, well, you're going to need to have gum tragacanth as the, um, as the binder. And there are other things. Um, sometimes they'll use talc powder, um, but gum tragacanth is the binder and distilled water, like I said. And... Um, the pure pigment, each pigment has its own unique characteristics because they're gathered from all over the world from different things. It could be from the earth. It could be from flowers or plants. It could be pigments come from um, Dirt. even insects. Um, I think there's one that's from horse urine. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's why you want to wear gloves. But um, they all have their unique characteristics because they 
some pastel or some pigments can be a little harder than other pigments and that's why you're going to need a little more um, a little less binder and a little more of the pigment itself um, but for for saving some money and you already have these leftover pastel pieces chips you can repurpose them and make your own so oh. um and how know. quick how quickly can you do that when you're not demonstrating because obviously to to take uh 22 minutes to make a single pastel stick is it's a big investment in time well you know once i once i get rolling <laughs> no pun intended it really goes fast so the the time that takes the most is crushing it and getting it so that it's um, nice and smooth powder, a silky powder. And then once you have the pigment, then you can start mixing. Um, like I could probably crush in here maybe another color. And um, I'm going to put, if I put yellow in the violet, guess what will happen? I don't know what will happen. Yellow and violet are complementary colors. So you're going to get a muted color, a gray. So I could do that and we'll see what happens. And obviously I have a little bit of, um, just a little bit of violet left over in here. And you can mix your own colors. And it's, oh my gosh, it's so, I, I you know what I really love about um, art is that you just take all sorts of elements and you can make things with them. I mean, I've, I've been uh, a, a, an explorer with mediums my whole life. Um, clay, uh, drawing, uh, plaster, sculpting, weaving, uh, everything. Uh, I, 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 honestly, I just have a wealth of all sorts of information on that. But I really enjoy um, getting my hands into my materials and having having um some ownership to everything that goes into what i create and that's what art is to me is exploring and trying new things and um asking myself what if and uh, obviously you can see how this is really messy because i've never done this before i'm you know using this mortar i like but it yeah, it's kind of, it's cool. I mean, look at this purple and yellow to combine. It looks like it's turning into a green. I don't know, look, kind of a green color. Anyway, so when you are going to be um, rolling your own pastels, you want to do it outside. I wouldn't recommend doing it inside, like maybe a garage or out in the back patio or um, somewhere where, you know, if you get messy, it's not going to ruin your f carpet or your floor. I would never paint pastels with carpet underneath me, but um, because the dust um, can be problematic, but there are tools out there to help you to keep things clean and dry and healthy, like a filter and dust bin and et cetera. So, and I'm in my office right now because my studio doesn't have great Wi-Fi. So here I am in my office and I had to set everything up on a card table with, with, um, you know, um, a, a drop cloth underneath and wow, look at that color. So I'm Yummy. Guess, I know it's like, oh, where'd my rubber gloves go? I just had them. They must have fallen off the floor with a stack of them. Well, I'll just reuse these guys. So, um, I don't know how much time we have left, Eric. Oh, you got enough. I do. Yeah. Okay. We'll make a mess. Let's make a mess. All right. Let's. <laughs> do you think you would do this, Eric? Probably uh, not, huh? Well, you know, it depends on uh, what my hourly rate turns out to be. <laughs> so, um, the fun thing about this is just it's just that it's handmade and you're repurposing the pastels that have fallen into your tray when you've painted because sometimes they'll fall and you'll also collect dust and you can make truly unique colors. Um, and those those are irreplaceable 
pastels they will never be invented there's no recipe for them at all because you're just making them out of leftovers and um it you know after a while your dustbin gets filled and it's a great way to like i said just uh, repurpose them so i'm going to try and grab this out of here i don't know how i'm just this is kind of odd <laughs> I'm making a mess, Eric. So I gathered more of the pastel dust and I'm gonna, ooh, wow, that's really cool. Look at that color. I mean, that looks like something like a, a spring green. Well, what's nice about it is you're getting a lot of surprises. You, unlike oil paint where you just mix until you're getting it perfect, you're just kind of having to guess. Yeah, and um, well, I had this beautiful vibrant purple and then I added, you know, I had just the dregs of the, of the violet and I added a big chunk of yellow. And so this is predominantly um, a green. So if I were to look at this color wheel here, which is always such a handy little tool. Um, I mixed the yellow with the violet and I had more yellow. So the more yellow is gonna be in this area here, which obviously it did, and it's grayer. So it's not an intense yellow, it's a grayer yellow like this. It's closer to uh, this color right here. So it's predominantly yellow, but look at that color. Oh my gosh, so I can roll it up. Make a little ball out of it. Like that. Woohoo! Such, such a little cutie. Look at that. So once you have your um, pigments all rolled up and you rolled them and then you set them out to dry. And um, like I said, you could use one of these. You can use a, a piece of white paper to make it really smooth or you can just have it as a hand rolled one and um, this is a nice way to make it really uh, consistent in shape and size and then you set it out to dry on a uh, paper towel for oh i would say two or three days but i i like to give it a week to make sure that it's um, completely dry and you don't want it to be um, you want it so there's no it's no longer cool to the touch this um is is the way to tell that it's still that it's ready to be used so that is how you use the dust from your pastel tray awesome so why don't you come back on camera i want to talk to you about something okay all right our guest today is brenda boylan and brenda just released a brand new video for beginners. Brenda's an excellent pastel artist, but she felt there was something needed for the beginners and the early stage people. Talk to me about that, Brenda. Yeah, um, well, when when you're painting with pastels, um, you wanna, you have a lot of droppings and accidents with your pastels. And I like to take them, take those droppings and reuse them. And it's saves some money. It's a unique way of handling your pastels and it's creative. It's just a lot of fun. So, and messy. <laughs> so tell us about your thinking on creating a, a video for beginners. Tell, tell us why you did that. Um, well, the, um, my, my process of teaching is I, I, uh, I like a lighthearted approach. Um, uh, so that it, it uh, lets you relax a little more and take in information better. Um, it's it's hard to explain for me, but it's it's just who I am and what comes out. And um, the the fun part, which is I don't know, we just use a lot of fun. <laughs> Did that make sense? <laughs> Sorry, Eric. I'm sorry, I was muted. Uh, let me just play this for everybody so they can see about the fun part. Oh, okay, Hi, I'm here. Brenda Boylan, and welcome to my workshop. In this workshop, we're going to be diving into pastels, and I'm going to teach you everything you're going to need to know to create a good painting. We're going to be learning about the materials, the supplies, 
the composition, color theory. There's just so much to learn about pastels that my intention is to share everything that I know. What's unique about my workshop is that I, I love to teach fun things. I love to have fun while I'm teaching. The workshop should be lighthearted and that way we're more likely to receive this information a lot easier when we use a light approach. What holds students back is the fear of failure and making mistakes on their work and they're inhibited by perfectionism. You'll see that even I make mistakes as a professional artist and that there's ways to fix them. I like to address this as a real creative medium and if I can help you have a lot of fun, your, your ability to learn faster will come along with the joy of creating. A student's painting skills are only built with their intention to build and upon and practice. It doesn't come magically. So come join me in this painting journey along with all my other little pastel friends here, <laughs> my pastels, and we can make some color. Outstanding. Well, <laughs> It's, it's exciting to see that, you know, we had, we had never done a, uh, we did one for beginners a long time ago, but it turned out it was more sophisticated than, than we wanted. And so we asked you to do one for beginners and you really bring it down to the core basics, you know, assuming that people don't know anything about it. And for, for somebody like me, that's so important because, you know, learning pastel is, is, uh, you know, it's a challenge. And like anything else, it's, it's you got to kind of have somebody tell you all the basics. Yeah. And it's a medium that's not very, um, let's say, uh, oil and watercolor um, and sculpture are well known in the world. But pastel is is a rare beauty and it's a wonderful medium to work with. And there's a lot of information um, that needs to be shared with those who are interested in pastel, it's it's it's, it's um it's a wonderful medium, and I just want to share that and help people learn how to to create and starting from the beginning, and uh, yeah, it's just a lot of fun. <laughs> I can't hear you, Eric. Oh, okay. I, my mic was muted. I apologize. There's some workers and I want to make sure the noise isn't going through. Anyway, Brenda, thank you so much for doing this and, and for sharing. Uh, if people want to buy that video, just go to painttube.tv or they can just look for the link in the comments. And uh, Brenda, we appreciate you showing us what you did with, with making pastel sticks today. I have a lot of pigments I need to do something with. So I'll have to get some of that binder and, and try this. And I'll get my hands all goopy. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, do it out on the back porch, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Well, and what I like about pastel is that you get that vibrant color. You know, if you add, when you take uh, pastel or you take pigment and you add linseed oil into it, it sometimes changes the color that you're seeing. But when you do it this way, it's really keeping that color the same. So you can go and get your pigment in that bright, vibrant color. It's yeah. pretty cool. And yeah, because you already have the, the binder in the leftover pastel, but you can actually make your own pastels if you have the right um, uh, binder stuff to, to go with it. Um, I don't have the technicalities right offhand for it, but it is a lot of fun, Eric, and it's it uh, every little bit that you do with your art is a learning experience, and so I just like to share that stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you, Brenda. Thanks for being on today. And uh, you guys make sure that you share this in the comments section. Uh, I mean, uh, you share it on, on your social media, put a comment in, make sure you put a comment in also so you can win that prize, which is the, the uh, Plin Air magazine apron. And Brenda, I'm a little disappointed that you're not wearing yours today. Oh, well, I, I have this one on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know I ha my I'm not in my office or in my studio where I have my plein air magazine. Um, yeah, right, right, I right. do. I yeah, do. <laughs> good good uh, recovery. All right, Brenda, thank you so much. Thank you, Eric, so All much right. too for uh, bringing me on.